Hello, I'm Dr. Ron England, and I'm going to go over a lecture here that's going to be on really the uses of collections, and it's really more than just the uses of collections because I have a lot more in here. Because a lot of the stuff that I end up doing is born out of necessity of trying to find the simplest way to actually achieve something in programming. So first let me show you what I actually want the program to do. So I'm going to go ahead and start this guy up, and this is a little calculator that I've, that I've designed. And what I'm really trying to do here is I want to get output that's in a format that's useful to me, but is also rel relatively easy to report generically. Uh, also, being able to use the same material in other classes. So here's my little calculator. I'm going to throw in some information here, just numbers. And this was developed as a, as a demonstration of user controls. So this is going to go through and do some relatively complex calculations in a domain class. It's got uh, essentially here I've, I've got four inputs whatever the input that's left blank is going to be calculated but when I calculate here what I do is I get all my results here in this little output section right here and what this is is an HTML table that I um, use to report it and uh, what I'm doing is I create the table in code and then I put it into a literal so I can display it so I have labels and I have values that come out and also have a level of precision that I want everything to come out as. Now there's a few constraints that, that I want here. One is I want them all to have a default level of decimal places, but I also want the user to be able to modify that. And I haven't built that yet, but I have a method by which I will build that. So let's look and see how exactly this occurs. Now, how does this happen? Well, from the interface side, I simply collect the information here, um, and I'll look at the, uh, at the actual calculator here um, to show you what I do and it's really not that hard here's my CS file when the user kicks, clicks calculate it creates a new circular channel object so it creates a domain object it gets the values from the interface it calls the calculate method of the of the domain object which is the circular channel and it puts the results into a literal that's lit results um, by calling c dot as html table so let's go directly to there and see if we can actually look at how this code works because it's kind of interesting here so now I've created this as html table now this is where I want to show how I use a dictionary to make this work as html table is actually a method in one of the objects that I use quite a bit which is called my xml property object and this is an abstract class. It actually doesn't need to instantiate, and it implements an interface called IXML property object. And the reason that interface exists is to ensure that the um, anything that implements this can be stored in an XML uh, database that I want to store this stuff in. Well, let's go back to this uh, to the as HTML table here and look at what I do here. So this constructs a string which is just HTML. So there's the string for table, there's the close table tags, and then I'm going to create a row in that table for each value that I want to output. So here's the key piece to this. For each key value pair, that's how you, and, and because property labels, property labels here returns a dictionary, which is a property and a label. That's it. It's a property and a label. Okay. Now, they're both strings. So for every key value pair, which is the, each element within that property label, I'm going to go ahead and put into a cell the value. Okay, that's going to be the value of the, the property label. That will be the actual label. And then I put the actual value of that property. But because they're all numbers, I also want to have a level of precision or decimal places. So what I do is I have also call another method called property places and I bring back from the key how many places that's going to be so let, we're going to look at that and see how that works and then I then I put then I call get property value and get property value is actually a method of XML property object where you can pass the name of a property and it will return it to you but I've got a get property value that will actually return and I'm, we'll go to that first okay uh, we'll go. To, we'll, we'll look at how that's done. So go to def. It? Go to definition. Go to implementation. Okay. So there's get property value. 
So here's what happens here. I pass it a string, which is the name of the property I want back. Now, you're probably going, what properties? Let's go back over here to the channel object. This is the object that actually has those properties of flow and slope that you saw in the interface. And you can see that these are actually properties of channel. Also, if you look here, you'll notice that I've also got this dictionary called property labels. And the dictionary has the name of the property and then the label that I want for the property. Name of property, label of property. And I have another one here, which is called property places. That's decimal places. So flow has one decimal place. Slope has three decimal places. So each of them has a number of decimal places that I want them to return at. Well, we can go back over to here now and say, well, how does this work? Well, the first thing that I do is I actually create a format string because you have to format the number of decimal places by using a format string. And it's simple. I just put 0 colon n and then n whatever number of places you have. So I actually call the places to string, I trim it, and I put the close. So this would be a standard format string that you would have anywhere you'd put when you're trying to format output, um, numeric output into a string. So it's no different from any other time that you do that. If you're not familiar with that, you can look up by looking at format strings and formatting um, you know, double precision and single precision um, numbers that are going to be placed into a string. But the way this really works is if you put 0 colon n1 as your format string, it's going to come out as a double precision with one decimal place of accuracy when it actually is output. The next thing that I do is I actually get the property. Okay, I use okay, the property info to get this, and I return a formatted string of the property using the format string. So if the property is of a double, is a double or float, okay, it will use the number of places and output a string, which is for, say say it's one decimal place and the number is 35.55555, it's gonna output 35.5. And here's your results right here. Okay, the numbers and this. So this is really a, a use of the dictionary. So in other words, that's going to return a property value. Now I also have another one that returns a property value right above here that's not a formatted one. Okay, so let's go back to where we were in as HTML table. So back where we are at, we can get the number of property places by simply calling the method property places which returns a dictionary which has the first the key as the name of the property and the value as the number of places you want to have in precision then i call get property value calling but with the first argument being the key which is the name of the property and the number of places you want to get which returns back a string which is the property value so what do you end up with when you're done here you end up with the the now remember everything is indexed by the name of the property every property every dictionary is indexed by the property name and then what you want so I get the label that I want to see here that goes with the property flow so it gives me back flow and CFS and then the number that comes back but really what I'm getting is the value of the property to a single place of precision and I just wrapper that inside of tables TDs for table cells inside of a table row and then I return the S back. Okay, So I can easily create and I can do it for any object that has numeric double precision properties. Okay, And all I have to do is create this property labels indexed off of the name of the property and the value that I want. Okay. Now, to show just to demonstrate here, I also have a circular channel, which is a specific, uh, which inherits from channel, and I actually add the property diameter to the property labels and the property places, because it's going to call the final implementation of the class. Now, one last thing that's very important here is that um, because I am calling property places and property value, I'm sorry, property places and property labels from the as HTML table here, I have to have an implementation in the same class. Well, the class has been declared as an abstract class, which means that I can make an abstract declaration of property labels and property places. It means it's not 
actually implemented here. It's implemented in a class that inherits from XML property object. So this abstract tells it that that's going to have to happen, that it actually has to, that anything that is going to inherit this has to go ahead and implement property labels and property places. And this is what they're going to return, a dictionary and property labels of a, of, two, of a string key and a string value, and a dictionary of a string key and an integer value, remembering that the key is always the name of the property that is being used in the class. Okay, one last time, looking at this, flow or flow in both of those must match a property called flow in the class that you're doing. Well, why is this easier than just putting the stuff out? Well, the nice part about this is if I create another type of object that uses this, I simply have to override property labels and property places, and I can always return everything back as an HTML table very quickly. Beauty of that allows me to create calculators very, very easily. Very good demonstration of both um, reflection classes to get back the information that's in the um, in the properties and dictionaries for storing information. And notice that it's very close. I keep the information right there in the class. So um, it's been very useful for me to be able to do this. Hopefully it's uh, something that will be useful to you if you need to get output and, do, and work with this. In a later lecture you're going to actually see how to let the user change these values and use the change values. Now, in reality, they're not going to obviously not going to go into the code and change the numbers in here. These will simply be the default numbers. But from the defaults, we'll be able to allow the users to make changes to those things, still keyed off of the names of the properties, and we'll be able to read those and use them. Uh, thank you very much. This hopefully has been useful to looking at one of the advanced programming techniques that I use. And uh, I, I really do hope this has been useful to you. Thank you very much.